right. Hello again. Hello again. Um, we'll give it a few minutes. Um, Victor Morales is the lead today, and he's having some connection issues. So give it a few minutes for him to join as well. Howdy, folks. Hey, Victor. That's Hello, Taylor. Good morning. Asha. I hope. Hi, Tom. Meeting notes are in the Zoom chat. You can add your name and any agenda items. Okay, it's five after the hour, so we, we should start it. Yeah, go ahead. Okay, let me share my screen. Um, let me know if you can see it. Um, yes. Good. Okay, um, before uh, I start in the, the the meeting, um, if you have something to agenda, please uh, add it, uh, the items. So the first thing that we have is, is just the incoming event. Um, this week is the Open Source Summit Europe. I try to capture uh, the topics related with the, the telcos. So those are some of the sessions that are they're going to have it. Um, we still have the, the, the hybrid um, opportunity to, to attend. It. So if you don't have the opportunity to travel there, so you can uh, take advantage of this. Uh, for KeepCon, um, so I think that we have the, the schedule. So I haven't taken a look of the, the sessions to try to uh, find some other topics really with telcos, but at least we have the, the cloud native telco day. So yeah, it's also, a, but in this case, uh, the telco day is going to be just in person, right? As far as I understand, right? It's only for people who are going to attend or is this going to be recorded? So. In person only. In person only. Thanks, Lucina. Um, last but not least, uh, one summit uh, is in Seattle. So, um, and during that week is also the 
LSM developer and testing uh, forum. So we have also the opportunity to participate. It's, it's a great opportunity to discuss topics and um, find things. Um, any other event can I, that is in your radar and haven't covered? Okay, um, if you find something interesting, please feel free to add to this list of events uh, to keep it on track. Okay, um, let's jump to the, the PR's review. Wow, <laughs> this is the first time that we don't have any PR's to discuss. Um, I think maybe ever. I don't know. Or it's been over a year for sure. That's good. It's a good thing. Hmm? Yeah. This is a round of applause, I think. <laughs> so, well, but, but at least we have issues, right? So we're maybe yeah. we can. We merged that exceptions. So that'd be probably a. <clears throat> some smaller updates for that exceptions, um, best practice guidelines. So that's one of them. So we start like um, this particular order? Just to yeah, it doesn't matter. Uh, whatever you think. Okay. So this is the, um, just adding the title to the exceptions. Yeah, go ahead and open it. I think uh, we're, so ex wanting to get it merged um, moving on that that we didn't notice it didn't even have a title it's just a template in there oh this mm -hmm. this is hmm. we have other content so. What I have also seen, like, uh, well, it tend to have story one and story two. Mm -hmm. yeah. Minor, so but the title would be nice <laughs> or any of it. Any, any suggestion? <laughs> So this is about documenting any exceptions to following best practices. That's the main point of this. Exceptions in the in the sense of uh, of the documentation. When or in the template, yeah. So the main point is communicate it when you don't follow a best practice. So, not and specifically, we're talking about best practices that you could follow. You know, there's lots of them that may not be applicable. So that's not what we're talking about. It's really when you have an applicable best practice and you believe that you have a reason to not follow that in the application, the operation management of an application or the implementation um, of it. And you want to communicate that. So that's what this is about. Communicate that you have an exception, you're not following it. So we use that non, uh, don't use root processes in your container is a best practice. And by that may, we mean you, sh you normally shouldn't use root. But if you have a reason that you really need to use root, then you should communicate that versus just doing it and not telling anyone else. I mean, it may be valid, but the point is to actually communicate it so that the 
integration team, the operations team, the security people, whoever will be able to take action based on that. You know, okay, we're we're okay with your exception, or no, we can't do it for this particular environment. But the idea is just to, I mean, I was just thinking like possible titles, but one could be like expression deception, like, uh, I mean, that would be it. But in this case, it's just like having one. Uh, so what about this? If this is just limiting one, for one single best practice. Uh, so I don't know if you are considered like having multiple exceptions, like multiple best practice exceptions on this. Or, or I mean, <laughs> just trying to do that brainstorming here like uh what could be a possible title for for this template or, or if we prefer like we can just as all all these options here in the in the issue and maybe we can vote later like uh with thumbs up or something like that sure and a tag Ian's assigned, but we should tag him again. This was his originally. Hmm. Hopefully he'll take action. Does anyone have any other? I put a title. I mean, I didn't do title case, but I put a title uh, or an, another idea, Victor, in the Zoom chat. Does anyone else have suggestions for a title for this document? No, I think the document exceptions to following the best practice is works for me. All right. Can you make that a bullet list? Okay. Mm -hmm. Oliver? Have any suggestions? All right. So now, just, I will just put it up here. Yeah. Would you um, tag in? Mm -hmm. For what? For uh, giving us more options, or like for modifying the the original? Template. He can, he can um he may come in and go, oh yeah, it should have had this, or he may go, that one sounds good. If he doesn't respond by next week, then we can do a PR for one of those. Yeah, I think that we still have this one. 
در همین دانه نیتینگر چه عواده مطفیل انترفیزش So, so what mm -hmm. I have seen is, uh, I mean, basically we have two possible solutions for, for this, this particular case. So one is like uh, using, for example, solutions like Multus and Dana, so where you have to predefine uh, the network. So before the creation of the pod, you have to specify how many leaks do you need it and all these things. Um, NSM is a little bit different in the, in the sense that you don't have to predefine those things, especially on the fly. When the pods are created, and they have that concept between endpoint and client, I think so. So, which is a little more flexible than, than the other ones. So, I don't know what could be the, the best practice. Uh, for, for me, I guess, like the best practice is always, the first rule is not to use uh, static IPs and try to define as much as possible all the networks as annotations. Uh, NSM and, and Diamond supports annotations. Uh, so basically you can define your resources uh, supporting both solutions with uh, different annotations and obviously what it is going to, when, when it is, whatever that is uh, deployed in, the, in your Kubernetes cluster is, is using those, um, the solution that you that, that have, for example, in your pod definition, you have both like NSM and Mutus annotations. When you deploy in your Kubernetes cluster, it's just going to take for example, multis, if, if that service only supports multis or NSN in, in the other case. So I don't know if we need to discuss a little bit more about this particular topic and then provide more, more information or start writing something like a draft and, and start from there. Do you have some ideas around how those practices could be tested? Hmm. Um, the only the only way that I think is maybe uh, having a single definition and to um, to test that or, or to deployment scenarios, like for example. Uh, and validate that the pod is created with two NICs. Uh, yeah, probably is the only, like, like trying first with Multus, with a, with a cluster with Multus enable it and verify that there are two NICs there. I, I think it's doable, uh, probably, yeah, have to discuss the details how, but, but at least just manipulating the, the, the Kubernetes cluster. So, 
So why? Why? Because you are thinking about the the conformance test. Yeah. The yeah for the ideally any practice that we end up being able to document a best practice, we can also figure out how to include it in the CNF certification. Mm -hmm. um, I don't want it to be a blocker. I think that if we have enough ideas and information that we can write something up, then we should do that. So if, if you feel good enough with what you're thinking, then starting a draft, that can be a, whatever you think, it can go into a markdown or you can create a Google Doc or whatever, maybe just link it to this ticket or add it to the meeting notes, whatever you think. Then okay. st start drafting and start working on it. No worries, Tom. See ya. He's gone. All right. Um, so we can reach out to Daniel and see, you know, if he could contribute as well. If if you think you can get started with a draft, Victor, and then we can just keep in mind that ideally we'd like to figure out how we can test. And a best practice may end up having a lot of various ways of testing, just like there's various ways of implementing, which is fine. Yeah, the other thing I, I know that Danon was very active in the past, uh, but now seems to be uh, mostly deprecated. I don't know if, what's the current status of that project. So I think that you also mentioned Genius, was another alternative or who was but anyway yeah probably i don't know if we are going to have to test you know the possible multi plexer solutions or just pick two of them or three mm -hmm. okay yeah i kind of started doing the the, the draft for this uh Writing up the ideas, and then maybe we can have another call where we talk about some of the testing aspects. Um, just thinking about it, I know that part of it, the because there's no standard way of declaring um, that you would, you're open to using any of the multiplexers and you just want to say, give me multiple network connections. And right now there's no standard way of communicating that. Mm -hmm. Then it means that there could be multiple implementations. So um, testing in some ways seems like it's implementation specific. Anyways, um, if we ha if we could start writing and talking about it, then maybe it'll move us closer to something that we'd like to see. I, I don't know what's going on with the newest versions of uh, Kubernetes where there's changes on the, the networking side, like the very newest releases that are coming out. I know that some of it's supposed to be addressing some of the things that we've been saying. Are you, mm. have you seen uh, yeah, that... the latest stuff from SIG networking and everything? Um, I haven't checked, but yeah, let me take a look at before. Yeah, or, or, or as, part, as part of the collecting information for that. Yeah, it's a good point. Um, yeah, maybe they did some interesting changes on this particular topic. Yeah. All right. Um, Tim, this is from Lucina. 
um, it has almost a year. Um, oh, okay. Uh, yes, I can take that action item to update the table of contents, uh, the test categories in the table of contents. Okay. So you have to modify the other um, best practices that uh, templates or the, I mean, it's, oh, I see. Okay. Um, it's even older. <laughs> Didn't we cover this with uh, the, the best practices that we have? Or is just something different? Like this, this is more like a, using the capabilities of the container. I, I couldn't understand that last. Can you? Say it again. No, uh, I was just thinking about uh, if this is not related with the the best practice that, that we have uh, about non-running con containers mm -hmm. with uh, root privilege. Uh, this is a different thing, right? It's yeah, correct. This is this is about setting privilege equals true for containers um, versus within a container having a process running as a root. Related, but not the same. And we do have a lot of documentation around this one, and we actually already have test. So this one would be, if we want to get one done soon, this is probably one that we could knock out quickly. We have that big document with a lot of content around lease privilege. Um, Yeah, there's, okay. I feel like there's some stuff mixed in here that's not the same, but anyways, um, it, yeah, the name of the title is correct, the privilege flag. It's referring to in the manifest for the container. So it's just a matter of putting all that documentation in uh PR, right? The only thing that it needs. I mean, we we need to draft a a best practice pull request for this one. Um, any volunteer? <laughs> no. Sorry, what? No, I was just asking for a volunteer uh, to. Uh, to continue on this? Um, go ahead and assign this one to me, the ticket. Okay. Are you, if you work on the draft for the networking and then um, maybe tag me for helping you review and help try to move that one forward. If you have some time, Victor, to help review and stuff on this one. Yep, I can also help you on this. Um, so you want that we can, I think that we can both as, as a sign this, right? 
Yes. Um, like this, right? Uh -huh. Okay. That, that was the last one. Um, so I don't know if there is any, anything else or anything that I have to keep it. Does anyone have anything else? I think I'm good. Okay. All right. Thank you. So thanks for attending this meeting. Um, we will talk soon next week. Sounds good. Thanks, Victor. Thanks, everyone. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.